Hello and welcome, I am the Sterling and today we are playing Going Medieval. Today in this episode, I have two main priorities. The first one, I finally want to finish the main structure of the keep, the central part here. That way we can move the settlers into the living quarters on top, which will be good. What is not good is to achieve this, I'm going to have to sit here and painstakingly, manually prioritize every bloody block. This is going to be painful. But these are the things I do for you. And then that way we can finally get rid of the timber fort. But before I can even think about doing any of the keep, I need to come over here to the mine and start mining more limestone because I need as much as I possibly can to turn into bricks so I can then use them on the keep itself. And now the second thing I want to do in this episode is I want to build a sally port. Now that I've blocked the entrance to this bridge here, the castle is now separated from the rest of the world. The only thing stopping the trebuchets coming on a regular basis is these priors on the outside of the main gate, which I feel is a little bit cheesy. I've never been a big fan of it. So sooner or later, I'm going to be moving these priors inside the walls. The problem with trebuchets is they sit on the edge of the map, outside of the range of our archers on the walls, and they just pummel everything we are taking forever to build. I don't like that. Now, typically, you would build a sally port somewhere, and you'd run out the back and you'd go and take care of the trebuchets. But the moment I make any sort of sally port where the enemy can cross, say, a bridge, then it makes the enemy unpredictable. At the moment, the enemy is predictable. We know they are always going to be trying to enter through the front gate because it's the only way that they can enter. They can't swim the moat because of how high we've made it. But the moment I make a sally port somewhere, then that might be another entrance for them. So what am I going to do? I'm going to have to try something a little experimental. I've never done this before, and I wonder if it's even going to work. But my plan is this. Somewhere in the castle, I want to build a nice deep hole all the way to the bottom. And then, in all four directions, build tunnels to the edge of the map. So that way, when a trebuchet pops up on the edge of the map, Sterling and the gang can sally forth and take care of the trebuchet. While Alfred and friends defend the main gate. Now, if by chance the enemy starts using our tunnel system, that's fine. We are going to make the entrance very small and they will still have to climb up to a gate where Alfred and friends will be waiting to stand there and attack them. Now, where am I going to put this entrance? I don't know. Is it going to be in the keep? No, oh, probably not. I'm thinking it's going to be connected to the main gate in some way. That way, if the enemy splits their forces and some are coming underground and some are coming above ground, I can then split my forces and attack them from both fronts. And then our settlers don't have to travel too far from one another, just in case things get a bit spicy. I don't want my settlers to be too far from one another. Now, I'll be the first to admit that this might be a bad idea. I haven't tested this idea yet. Could be a good one. Could be a bad one. Might interfere with plans I have in the future. Don't know. But we'll give it a crack and see how it goes. But my word, when you look at the size of the map, that is going to be one hell of a tunnel system. That's going to be huge. So probably not going to happen all in one episode. But at least we can start it this episode. But as I said, my main concern is finishing the keep. So sit back, grab a cold one, and let's get started. Now let me tell you a story. It begins in the winter of 1356. I begin prioritizing work on the keep micromanaging to get it done. Raiders attack Sterlington. Raiders die at Sterlington. Time passes. The settlers go about their daily business. And I micromanage the construction of the keep. Settlers do some mining, go about their daily business, and I micromanage the construction of the keep. They farm, they build, they do some more farming, they train animals, we get a new settler, Joan, they train some more animals, they do some more farming, they fight, they barbecue, and then they become self-sufficient by fermenting and producing wine. All the while, I micromanage the build of the keep. We gain a new settler, and I name him Richard. 
and then we continue mining with the help of our new puppy army hauling for us. We then gain another newcomer that we name Alexandra. Once again, Raiders attack Sterlington. Once again, Raiders die at Sterlington. And time passes. We mine for limestone. To mix things up, I begin micromanaging the build of the front gate. More time passes. Then we use said front gate to defend Sterlington from yet another invasion that we defeat in great fashion. We run out of room for dirt and decide to use it to build up around the cathedral just for something different. Our puppy population breeds and grows almost as fast as we receive new settlers. I name this one Sophia. And that brings us to now. Summer of 1358. In game, only a few years have gone by. But in real life, it's been like four days. But my word, is it worth it? Have a look at the keep. I'm really, really happy with that. That looks fantastic. Now, of course, there is lots still to do on that central keep. Little bits of decoration, banners, things like that, as I research new things and whatnot. But that's the main structure done. So that's the roof. The living quarters is now complete, except for a few backgammon tables that still need to be completed. The first floor of the library is complete, except for a few research tables that need to be built in the middle. The second floor still has plenty to do. And the Great Hall is complete. We've still got to add a few decorations, a few banners when we get them. But other than that, it's completed. And the kitchen's had another upgrade once again. We've added a second stove. We've also now finished the gatehouse, except for the decorations once again, like banners and etc. But the main structure's there. We've also laid out the plans for another tower. It's nice and symmetrical. I've also built up the soil around the cathedral. Don't panic. This isn't how it's going to look in the end. We've got a lot still to do. But I took the time to build it up. We're also mining coal down here. We're desperately running out of coal and we keep burning up all our wood and then we're running out of wood. So we've got a vicious cycle going on. But there's plenty of coal down here, so I'm not too worried. As you can see, we've carved out a big chunk of the mine down here. Plenty of iron. We're never running out of iron. That is crazy. But we will still run out of limestone. It's, it was such a large project down here, and it was such a distance from the keep. I actually had to put living quarters down here. Most of the time, our miners had to sleep and eat in here because they just couldn't get back in time. And we we're having all sorts of issues with them getting upset, sleeping halfway on the way back, or starving. Like, we were having a lot of issues. So... We had to tackle that in different ways, and I found this was the best thing, just to build a little home away from home. Now, you may have noticed something's a little different about the, we'll call it West Wing? For the moment, today we'll call it West Wing. Tomorrow it'll be East Wing. I keep flipping. Not quite sure where North is, to be honest with you, in the game, so it doesn't really matter. My point is this, though. Look at it. It's different. What have I done? If you remember, the infirmary was there. Now, it's still there but it's no longer on top. I have now designed the living quarters on the second floor rather than the infirmary. And the infirmary is now on the bottom floor, as you can see. Not quite sure what I'm going to do with the rest of the rooms over here, but I'm sure I'll figure something out. I'm still yet to design the tower that will be going over here. Now, you may have noticed the living quarters in the top of the keep looks a bit different. That's because I've knocked out a whole heap of walls and made the rooms much, much larger. So they're a lot more comfortable. But I didn't just stop there. As you can see, I've completely redesigned the living quarters on top of the stone, brick, clay, masony sort of area. Not quite sure what we'll call this. If the other side was the west wing today, I guess this is the east wing. But once again, we've made the room significantly bigger. Now, this all took place before I got swamped with all these new settlers. And then I almost had everyone out of the fort, and guess what? The fort has slowly been getting moved back into, which is an absolute pain in the ass. It really was. I was almost ready to bulldoze down the fort. I thought, fantastic, we're going to come back after our little montage, be able to knock the fort down. Nah. So as you see, I've slowly been adding beds back to the fort. But the workshop is on its way to being emptied. So that's great. In fact, right there, that campfire can be deleted. So, 
Well, I'm there, I'll click on that. But what have I done under the fort? Well, there's been quite a lot of earthwork around. My biggest issue I've had over the last few days of playing was storage. I just can't find enough place to put things. And one of the biggest problems was actually all this linen cloth. So I've been selling a whole bunch of it every single time a merchant comes, but they, they can only carry so much every single time they come. And I'm producing far too much. As you see, we've split the fields up and now flax is now sharing its field with barley as the herbs are now sharing their field with red currant. Now, why am I growing so much red currant? That's because now we've started wine production. And then on top of that, we've actually had to ramp up wine production even further. So now we've got two fermenting stations. And then in the corner here, we add all our fermented fruit juice that ends up becoming red wine. And then in this corner over here, we have a stone brick brazier to which I turn on because the room has to be a perfect temperature for fermenting. As I was saying before, I was running out of room for dirt. I was running out of room for linen. Been selling linen. I used up literally all of our dirt to build up what you see there. And don't worry, dirt just comes so quickly, it's crazy. I just have no room for it. And now with all this extra iron and limestone and clay and coal, and then there's all the weapons and armor and the food. The, the food is just crazy. Have a look. Like we have so, so much. There's no room for it. So I've gone a little crazy on storage. I've been digging a lot of holes. One of the first things I did is I've actually dug the main towers down another level. As you see, I've added another big bunch of storage for materials and manufactured materials. Not to mention, I've now built an overflow for the food. Like, I wasn't kidding when I said that I've built a lot, but I haven't just stopped there. As you see, we're starting to get all the storage off the roof of the keep because the keep's coming down. Sadly, inside the keep, it's still bloody full. So what am I doing? Well, we used to have a food cellar under the keep, didn't we? Why don't I utilize that? Well, I did, and it got full. So what did I do then? I made it bigger. I'm just going to have to keep expanding this. And you're going, gee, Sterling, you got stuff everywhere. Yeah, I know. It's really unsorted at the moment. And look, I know I'm going to go through and I'm going to sort it. And I, I, There's a lot to do. I, I haven't, basically, I've been spending a lot of time trying to build up the keep, but also digging all these bloody holes and filling dirt. And it's been busy, been really, really, really busy. And so I'm actually really wrapped with all I've done. It's, it's been it's been a pretty busy few days, like it's crazy. But this piece of storage here that you see will be expanded. But for the moment, I ran out of time. So I will expand it in the future. Now on top of doing all this building, all this digging, all this mining, all this farming, and the amount of limestone bricks I've had to make. Now, I know that you're looking and going, well, why is everything orange? Because whilst I was doing all the digging and while I was building up over the cathedral, I have forbidden them from being able to use limestone bricks. That way they don't continue building walls and all that sort of jazz. I really just wanted them to concentrate on doing their terraforming and also their jobs, which are getting really, really low now. With the amount of food I've got and all that sort of stuff, I haven't really been worrying about farming over the last few days. I've actually, there was a stage there where we had a ridiculous amount of food. And so, and it was rotting before they would even touch it. And so I went, oh, bugger this. We've got things to do. We've now got about 14 settlers off the top of my head. And I was like, well, we've got 14 people to build the keep. But that's the thing too. We're not actually doing that much hauling anymore either. So we can concentrate on working. Now, why aren't we doing that much hauling anymore? Well, because I went and turned a couple of dogs that we had domesticated into pets, which was surprisingly quick. I, I was expecting it to take a really long time. I was just going about my business, doing whatever it was I was doing. And it wasn't long and I just went to the overview tab to do a bit of hunting and I was like, oh, they're already pets, which that's awesome. But then every time I go to the overview tab, there was more of them. They breed like rabbits. I can't get over how quickly they breed. I've never really gone down the path of making pets out of domesticated animals before. But once you do, they just breed and breed and breed so quick. It's awesome. There's a goat here that took forever 
to domesticate and then turn into a pet. Like, I, I thought the goats were meant to be easy. It actually took a while. But then again, maybe luck of the draw, I was using a settler that was rubbish at taming animals. I don't know. But seriously, these dogs are a godsend. They have completely changed the way I play. They just run around the settlement hauling everything. It's like having a whole nother bunch of settlers that do nothing but haul. It's really, really good. And they seem to do it so much faster than the settlers. This is great. But if I'm not careful, I'm going to come back here and there's going to be 50 of the bloody things. They, uh, no joke. They breed ridiculously quick. So now that's Castle Stirlington starting to really come together. I'm really, really happy. What else did I say we're going to do this episode? That's right. We're going to start tunneling like Molman. And there's the extra door. This door here leads to a ladder that's going to go right down and out to the edges of the map. And then I've created a bit of a kill zone. We can have archers standing here at the window shooting the enemy as they come up the ladder. And we can have pikemen stand here at the door and stab through the door as they come up. And I've left only enough room for one person to come up. Now, I'm going to keep digging that down, but we've only gone down one level at the moment. So as you can see, I've placed a little wooden marker here. And I've placed one over here as well. What I've done is I've gone through and worked out exactly halfway on this edge and exactly halfway on this edge. There will also be one on this side and on this side. But I haven't had to put a marking because the tunnel is just going to go straight across the map in a cross fashion. At this very moment, this is the lowest point on the map. But before, when I said uh, we're going to dig all the way to the bottom, I accidentally lied. That is not true. I want to dig this down low enough that whatever I decide to do down here, whether I dig it out and flood it or whatever, I'm more than capable of doing. So I only have to go down two levels below this level here. So that there is level. That's one down, two down, three. So this is the level in which we will be digging the tunnels. And it's not such a big deal. It's only going to be seven or eight levels down from the gatehouse, whatever it works out to be. But it's actually going to be a rise up here. We will be climbing to get up there. So how I'm going to make this entrance, not 100% sure yet. I'm thinking it's probably going to end up being stairs, just a massive big ramp up. But we'll see. Now, in my usual fashion, not 100% sure how I'm actually going to do all this. I don't know if it's just going to be a single little narrow tunnel or if I'm going to go through and make it quite wide and put beams and all that sort of jazz. have no idea. I'm sort of just going to do it as I go and do whatever feels right. So that's the plan for the tunnel. But before we go and do that, I want to release all our building materials so then they can start getting back to work building up the castle. We'll allow the clay piles. We'll allow the limestone blocks. Limestone piles, these clay bricks, and now all the limestone piles here at the mine. And there we go. So now when I hit play, they should start getting to work once again building the castle. So that's great. I'd like them to start on the cathedral soon. I'm sort of torn. I'm not sure whether or not I want them to do the westy east wing. Once again, not sure what I'm calling that. I think from now on, this is how we're going to do it. That's the west wing. That's the east wing. And we're going to leave it like that. West wing, east wing. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We're cemented. So I guess then that means that's north. Huh, okay. So now let's start planning out the dig. So we'll come down. We'll tell them to dig that. And that. There we go. I can now cancel the markers. And now we just have to hope that in the meantime, we don't get attacked by trebuchets. Now that the stairs are built, we can dig down to the next level. So what we'll do is we'll go one there, then we'll come down and we'll go one, two, three, and four. And now we'll do the same on this side. So we'll dig that out there, then we go down and we'll go one, two, three, four. So we run along wood, so as you can see, I've gone around and marked a whole bunch of trees for cutting. So that way, they can come over here and build this ladder so we can get down and start digging out the next little area for us to put the stairs. So now, while they're taking care of the digging, I think it's a good time for us to come into the research tab and research, research too. 
We'll come over here and hit unlock. Perfect. And now we'll come to the library, open up production, come to research table, and we're just going to chuck it in willy-nilly at the moment. That is not where it's going to end up. We're going to have quite a few tables and such in the middle, but for the minute, it doesn't really matter where it is. We're just going to chuck it in there. And then once we research, research three, then I can start thinking about how we're really going to plan this out. Perfect. And now we'll start researching textbooks until I have 300. Done. There we go. So they've now dug out the next layer. We can then delete the ladder going down. We can come over to the other side and delete this ladder. And once they've deleted those ladders, I can add the next layer down. So now we've researched enough textbooks that we can unlock research three. Done. And while we're here, we're going to research cartography. Done. So now we can come into the library where I've destroyed both research tables and we can plan this out properly now. So we'll start by putting down an advanced research table. So I'm thinking we'll put it about here. Done. Next, we're going to put in a research table. We'll put that in here. Done. And now we'll put in a basic research table. Done. So that's the three research tables. And now we'll put in a cartography table. And I'm thinking we'll put it in about there. Perfect. Once they've built them, I can then set the different research tasks and we can start researching a whole bunch of stuff in the research tab. And then once they've finished the cartography table, we'll come back and start playing with that as well. And here we go, cheeky little raid coming in. We should make light work of this. Here we go. Hopefully they don't kill any of our pets. Doesn't look like they have any archers, so that will make a nice, easy little turkey shoot for us. Where are they heading off to? Where on earth are they going? Oh, I know where they're going. We've made an entrance by accident down here. Right here. Uh-oh. Here we go. So we'd better grab everybody from here and place them up here. Then what we'll do is we'll grab all our archers and we're going to place them on the edge here. That way, as they come around, we can start shooting them. Because silly us, we made this. So then we could easily dig and mine down here. Silly, silly Sterling. That's all right, not the end of the world. Ooh, he's got heavy armor, so we'll get rid of him. Go, go, go. Good. And now let's we'll start shooting these guys in the back. Go, Sterling. There we go. Perfect. We're making light work of this, aren't we? And victory. Not even a challenge. We'll clean up the last bloke. Done. Oh, there's one more over there, but can we get him? Nah. Oh, there's a couple actually, but we don't really need the stuff, so it doesn't matter. We've got better things to be doing. So we've undrafted everyone. Back to work. We'll allow everything. Done. Did I have any over here? I think I had a few desks over here. Yep. Nice and easy. So now we'll put down a caravan halt out here. So every time... The merchant comes, he'll come here instead of coming into our actual castle itself. And so that will be good. So now we've finished construction of the cartography table. It's opened up a new tab, region. We can now click on the region tab and it shows us all the other civilizations we can make contact with. Some such as the forest bandits here or the river bandits or more forest bandits over here. They are permanently hostile. We can't trade with them. We can't do anything with them. But places like here, the Band of She-Wolf, 
we can send a caravan and so we can go and trade with them. I believe later on down the track, we might be able to go and attack other places. Don't hold me to that. But for the minute, we can trade with other places. So this is good. Perfect. So we've now dug down to the level that we want to start building the tunnels. So let's go down and start planning it out. So we're going to be coming across here. So we'll go very straightforward. Just run the tunnel all the way across like so. And this is all we're going to do the whole way across the map. Okay. Going to keep going all the way. We just have to cross our fingers that nothing collapses. And we can leave it about here somewhere because that's going to have to come down quite far. In fact, that might be a tad too far. It is quite high over here. And then we can do the same thing for this side. Find it first. Here it is. We've already started, so we can just continue off. Confirm that that's the right height. Perfect. And continue on our way this way as well. Somewhere around here. Beautiful. Now they'll start digging that out. And that will be our underground tunnel network. As you can see, I've built a nice big storage location here. You're wondering what that's for? It's going to be for nothing but dirt. Only because I assume we're going to be collecting a lot of dirt building this tunnel network. So here we go. And there's all our research tables now in. Now I can go through and tell them how many of each I want to put in. Fantastic. Now we're going to be well on our way to researching a whole bunch of more stuff here in the research tab. While I'm here, I might research a few things, such as decorative banners, done. And stone carving, done. So soon we'll be able to research blacksmithing, steel, and wood carvings, and that will be great. And now that we've got stone carving and banners, we can go around and start decorating some of our buildings. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go around and decorate a whole bunch of stuff. You can make them out of almost anything, but we're going to make our banners out of linen. Why? Because we've got so much linen. So we're just going to litter the joint. Perfect. I think I've put enough around now that we're representing. And now we're going to come over here to the stonemason bench. And this is where we create the large statues and the wall reliefs. And we'll set it to 10 each. That way we can build quite a few and then we can put them around. But as you can see, we're flashing red. Good chance that we're out of limestone. So let's go have a look at the mine and see what's going on over here. Yeah, going through the raw materials, we're definitely out of limestone. Wow, we burned through a lot of limestone. That is crazy. We're always running out. So I'm just going to go through and pick and choose the limestone out of the mine. But problem is, I don't see them attacking this anytime soon. Only because we've given them such a large digging project, making the tunnels underneath the entire map. So it might be a while before we see some limestone. I might have to manually prioritize this. We'll see how we go. Nope, I was wrong. Look, they're over here straight away, straight into it. So that's not bad. I would have thought that they would have prioritized the other digging project. And I would have been wrong. Is that some limestone? Yes. We're actually running out of limestone over here. It's not good. I'm having a look. Like, there might be a little bit here. But majority is iron over here, so I might have to start mining limestone somewhere else soon. There's another little patch over here, so I might be wrong now. See, there's some over on the ground. So there's some on the next level as well. So there is, oh, there's a big patch right there. No, I'm, I'm telling fibs. I'm lying. 
I'm lying. No, there's plenty of limestone there to keep me out of trouble for five minutes. That's all I'm asking for. The stealing doesn't look too far into the future. Ooh, there's a gold vein. We always like gold. Not that I think I'm wanting for gold. I think I've got a bit of it. Let's have a look. Ah, three raw. Ooh, 360 gold ingots. Cha-ching, look at us. Don't worry, I'm not going to let my vast wealth go to my head. I'm just going to go out and buy fast cars and big houses. I've always wanted a yacht. Anyway, I digress. Have a look at this. Three more dogs have been born. This is crazy. There we go. More dogs to our hauling army. Fantastic. So now I think it's time for us to plan out the tower for the West Wing. This tower here is exactly nine blocks away from the keep itself. So I also want to make the West Wing tower nine blocks away from the keep. And now, in preparation for this, I've already dug out the dirt ready to put in the tower. Now, it's all pretty straightforward, the usual thing I do. Cross there, then it's five that way which gives you one, two, three, four, five inside, which is perfect for stairs, and then on the sixth across. And so it's five by five on the inside. Now, I'll delete the Merlons that are next to the tower. Now, as you see with this tower, it's one level above the actual gantry walkway of the wall. So that's what we're going to do for the other tower. I decided to push this wall here, back one, only because after putting it here, it just seemed a bit too close to this roof itself and didn't give us enough of a walkway, where this just seems a little bit more fluid. And now we can put in the inner timber wall, a door, and now we can put on the roof of Merlons. And there we go, the West Wing Tower is now all planned out. And there we have it. The first lot of our banners are now representing on our keep. I reckon that looks pretty good. So where are we at at the moment? Well, first thing you might notice is that we've dug out around the stairs leading down to the tunnels. And then we've replaced it with limestone just to give it that sort of crypt look. We've also added a greater door just so then it's that little bit extra protection and another little stepping stone that the enemy will actually have to break through before entering the tunnel network, before getting all the way down underneath the keep and then coming up into the gatehouse. It's, it's a bit of a pain in the ass for them. So I'm hoping that that's enough of a deterrent that they leave it alone. 
Love his last words, but this is all probably going to blow up in my face. But, hey, it's all in the name of entertainment now, isn't it? Now, the next thing that you wouldn't have noticed, because it's hidden, is I've been prioritizing this. Look how deep that is. That's deep. How deep, do you ask? <whistles> Boom. Deep. It was a pain in the butt to get them to prioritize that too. It actually took a long time. So what have I learned by sending our settlers up and down this ladder to dig this out? It takes them a while. It actually takes them a while to climb down. This whole project might be bust right now. This might not be a viable, fast response option to taking out the trebuchets. Them actually climbing down this ladder alone, half the castle might be gone. Until we actually put all this into action, I'm just not going to know. And it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work. It's moving on next time. I'll go, hey, we're not going to do this. But I'm having a bit of fun with it. How much of the tunnel have I actually dug? Bugger all. Bugger all, trust me. They're not even touching it. The reason for this is we've been too busy doing the entrances to the tunnels and also digging out the mine for all the limestone that we need. Not to mention, it did take a while for us to dig down that tunnel. And we've been clearing large amounts of forest, as you can see. We've been cutting down so many trees and still can't keep on top of the timber needs. I didn't realize I needed so much timber. It's, it's crazy at the moment. I've been looking around, trying to work out where I've been using timber. And other than the odd roof here and there, the odd ladder... I do understand that the banners need timber, but honestly, I didn't think I had that much timber needs. So maybe they're now burning timber, but I don't know why they would. I've got coal, so I don't know. But what I do know is I've had to chop down trees and it, they're gone. Sadly, that's all the time we have for today. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.